have been um, immersed in transformation across the board, and I'm going to talk to you uh, about that. It started um, in 2019, and um, basically we were running up um, some walls, um, both in traffic, sales, um, kind of, you know, the, it just wasn't working anymore. Those coupons weren't working, um, and, and our strategy wasn't working. So we brought together um, IDEO and McKinsey, and we got to work. And, we, and we, we were really studied, what is it? Where is the headspace? Where do we go from here? We're mature. We have 1,300 stores. Where do we go? Because we're, it's not working anymore. Um, and so what we found previously, our strategy was really built on the concept that anybody can make. If we just open up, if we get all of you to start baking and you know, crafting with your kids and coming in, that we're going to just open up this universe of makers. And, and that helped us in some categories, seasonal um, kids, but what it, it didn't help us in our core categories, and we were actually falling asleep. We were asleep at the wheel in areas like jewelry making and knitting and you know some of the, and you know those other technology and fine art. So um, so what we did is we're doubling down on that core maker. And that is our strategy is really we're here for the maker. We listened and, and we are um, a completely you know customer centric, maker centric organization now. This is actually our new headquarters. We downsized 50% um, through COVID and at the heart of it you can see um, that strategy. And here is one of our makers. This is one of the thousands of makers who engage with Michaels. And you can see her fabulous studio, her space, her makes. And this really truly is at the core of everything we do. And you're going you're gonna to meet a few more makers this morning. Along this journey, we touched really every, every part of the business. And this idea of listening, learn, and repeat, and doing that very quickly um, was foundational. In store, um, had a lot, to work, a lot of work to do. We still have a lot of work to do. Um, we're 20,000 know, uh, square foot box with about 40,000 SKUs with not a lot of design. And a lot of our stores are between you know, 15 and 20 years old. And our makers told us, you know, they basically said, your stores are cluttered. You know, Hobby Lobby is, is more open. I, you know, I can, see, I can see things. I want a place to engage. Um, and so we, we took those insights, again, customer maker insights, and we created a, a new prototype. We worked with an agency, uh, an architecture firm out of the UK, DL and POW. I'm not going to go through this, but we really tried to um, re-envision and remake the store in a more holistic way, all in answering to what are the adjacencies? What are those categories that we want to exploit and make more important, right? All, again, back to those insights. Um, one of the things that we did is we created uh, an experiential, to Trevor's point, a space at the front of the store. We gave it front right of the store, an open um, classroom, right? Prime real estate, where our makers can drop in, take classes, be a part of our programming. Opened up the store, improved sight lines, which we had none. And, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to you know, um, remind us, this is in 20 stores. So we still have a ton of work to do. And actually operationalizing this, funding something like this, making a case for it, right? When you lower fixtures and you actually have to eliminate SKUs is hard work. Um, so by no means are we figured out, but we are doing a lot of experimentation. Here you can see merchandised. We created five what we call inspiration hubs within the space. So rather than just feature newness and excitement at the front of the store, we've pulsed it throughout the space in these what we call inspiration hubs, little mini pop-up shops. Here's our fine art shop again. This is one of those growth categories for us that we learned we really need to double down on. New fixtures, better fixtures, open stock, Tried to learn from our friends at Sephora. We're still, you know, again, it's always learning, but um, trying to, again, make it more, more interesting, more experiential. Our kids' hub. And then actually giving back some space uh, from merchandising, giving it back to the customer, whether it be a, a place to do a floral, a floral arrangement in our floral department or just information and education on our end caps versus loading them up with stuff. And again, hard choices. You know, those merchants, man, that, those were really uh, very um, 
incredible meetings, a lot of collaboration just to get, again, can you give us that power panel so we can actually put content on it and try to inspire our maker? So in addition, while we were doing that, we were also working on our go-to-market strategy, right? And again, that, you know, we had been, we had really gotten into, like others, um, into this cycle of, you know, promo and coupon. So we partnered with an agency, um, RGA. We worked with their Austin office. And here's what, here's what, we, what, we, what we believe. Without makers, we are canvas, paint, but not a painting. We're googly eyes and felt, but not a charming puppet. We're yarn and needles and thread, but we can't keep you warm. That's where our awesome, unique makers come in. They take our supplies and make them into something more. They make us into something more. They make us Michaels. And our platform is Michaels, made by you. I'm going to show you a little piece um, about, that tells that story. Michaels is the biggest arts and craft retailer in North America. In an effort to stay that way, they got caught in a price war they couldn't win. They needed a new way forward, focusing on the one thing Amazon could never deliver, which it turns out wasn't a thing at all. It was Mary and Dana and Tisa, makers who could take this and turn it into something extraordinary. And in order to make the extraordinary happen, they needed a lot more than paint, paper, and canvas. So Michaels transformed from a warehouse for supplies into a creative champion for makers. We announced our new purpose with a comprehensive creative platform tagged Made By You. So here we go. So to begin. Choose your color palette. I chose pink because why not pink? Just goes on really nicely. I am going to be using polka dots. And the single crochet stitch. Then I peel away the paper. You can add some gold leaf gems, colored paper. And we've added a little dingle dangle. It's a paint pour. A, a journal. journal. A crown pendant. No matter what or why you make, you make us more than yarn, paper, and canvas. You make us Michaels, made by you. Made by You reoriented Michael's purpose around maker needs and transformed their business in the process. They removed product that didn't support maker needs and added new products in collaboration with makers themselves. The store was reimagined, taking it from a place to shop to a place to create. We offered free live classes, how-tos, and inspiration. Hey guys, I am Jennifer Perkins. Hello, crochet friends, it's me. I'm gonna walk you through the process of creating a moss mind map today. We told makers stories, supported their causes, and gave exposure to their unique styles. The Kerbacher Market opened up right when the pandemic hit, and I thought they could use some help. I just really wanted to create something for the neighborhood. I hope my art helps people see my happiness. Business has been booming, or blooming, if you will. And after showing up for Makers, Makers showed up for Michaels, solidifying Michaels' role in Makers' lives in a way Amazon never could. The other things that we're doing uh, with this transformation also have to do with how we, go, how we do business. We're super proud. They actually enabled us to um, get through the pandemic really successfully. Um, in three weeks, we um, launched curbside pickup. So we, got, we could actually keep our stores open um, and keep you know, arts and crafts uh, flowing to customers because actually the pandemic was um, a lot of people were you know making things um, so we did so we did curbside pickup two months later we were able to um, roll out same day delivery and again another you know safe contact free kind of a system we're experimenting with shop and scan moving into um, uh, self checkout um, again we're 1300 stores you know, very mature retailers. So we've got, it, you know, a lot of these things take time even just to create the space and, and the money to, to do it. Um, we've recently announced our partnership with Instacart uh, for same-day delivery, and so that's in the works as well. We're building community. 
We talked yesterday about diversity and inclusion efforts, um, and along with, and it, this has coincided with the work that we've done you know, around the makers, we've actually launched our MRG groups. We have 10 Michaels resource groups um, within the organization that are actually the kind of the soul and the heartbeat of the of the company they inform you know i love this we you belong at this craft table everyone you know you're an, you're an integral part of creativity um, you're welcome here uh, that you know shows up in our merchandising assortments um, in how we hire and and a, a lot of engagement efforts this is at our support center Classes and events. We've always had classes and events. Um, this is a, a renewed focus for us to make the store environment you know, even that much more engaging. Um, we obviously have to navigate um, with, with COVID and things like that, and so, but we're, we're innovating. We have free make breaks every Sunday. We do um, take and makes for kids once a month. We, do, we are doing ongoing, but again, this is labor, you know, so have, figuring out how to make a case for that is, is, can be challenging. We launched online um, classes and events, um, again, with the pandemic. Couldn't, couldn't do them in store. Right now, we have 1,400 um, classes um, that you can find and learn things that are, um, on, that are online. Um, every week, we add 25 more to that. So we're, we are engaged online with learning beyond what, we were, what was ever possible. And again, this is that kind of agile mindset, our, our head of education, she was you know, literally creating videos in her living room and we were posting them. I mean, that was, it's not like they had to be you know, super produced uh, because we, it, was, it was more um, important to teach people how to make masks than it was to get um, that perfect video out the door. We engage with our makers, hashtag make it, make it with Michaels is actually how we get that maker content. And so makers, if you, if you look in our, in our marketing, um, the content, the projects that we're showing are actually back to the point, they're for the maker. We're celebrating them. We're actually tagging, our, we're tagging them to their Instagram to you know, reward and, and honor and celebrate uh, their work. And then where we're going next, the makerpreneur, there's a huge opportunity for us to be more relevant and more of a resource for that, um, for the makerpreneur. So this idea of you know, going from dream, make, sell for the person who has a maker hustle or a, a, um, a business. We launched Michaels Pro this year. Again, this is another merchandising strategy essentially, which basically bundles products and makes them more affordable um, at, um, when you buy in quantity. And then finally, coming soon, this year, we're gonna be um, launching our own um, Michaels Marketplace an ecosystem that um, both supports that core maker, place where, where they can sell, um, learn, find community, um, and you know, really fulfill their, their maker life. So thank you, that's, that's it. Thanks for letting me share our story.